in all of the applications that we're going to develop later in the course, including our study of competitive markets, we're interested on in knowing not only what the solution of the consumer problem is for a particular price, but more generally in writing down what is called the demand curve or demand function, which is a function that maps any possible price greater than zero to the level that is demanded by the consumer. This, is gonna, this denotes the demand curve or the demand function. Please notice that we're going to restrict the price to be greater than zero because if the price is equal to zero, the problem makes no economic sense. At a price equal to zero, as long as the good is not harmful, the consumer, or even a, a little bit helpful, the consumer is just going to demand an infinite amount. So the problems are not well defined in that case. Now, this demand function is going to be represented graphically in a way that may be a little bit unusual. Normally, you would have expected the price P to be in the x-axis and then the quantity demanded to be in the y-axis. But it turns out that in economics, for a variety of reasons that you're going to see throughout this lecture and the next few weeks, is extremely useful to invert the axis and have the independent variable in the y-axis and the dependent variable x here. So what we're going to want is to find a curve, basically something like this, let's say, that basically takes any price P and tells us what is the quantity that the consumer demands. And it does so at any possible price. The next obvious question is how do you completely characterize the demand function? The good news is that given all of the work that you have done so far, this is going to be extremely easy. And let me explain why. Now, take a typical example in which you have x here, price here, and I'm going to plot the marginal benefit function looking from this direction as a function of x. Okay, And let's say for the sake of example that this intersects there. Now question, let's think about what is the demand at different prices. So suppose, for example, that you start at this low price and you want to know what is the demand at this low price. Let's call it P0. Well, we know that we have the marginal cost function that is given by that, the marginal benefit function, and we're going to have an interior solution in this case that tells me that X star or the demand function at P0 is there. Let's increase the price a little bit. Let's say to this, to P1. What is going to be the demand in this case? It's given again by the intersection of the two cores. So X star is going to be given by that. Now, we can keep going and doing the same. Let's say here, P2 is going to be given by this. Up to the point where we hit the intersection. After that point, let's say, Let's call that a price um, p hat. We know that at any price p hat or higher, the demand of the consumer is going to be zero. So in that case, we are at zero. Now, think what does what this means. This means that at any potential price, what we have to do is go. And remember, by the way, as we said before. We are looking at an inverted relationship. So we are thinking that the prices are here and the demand is plotted in the x-axis. So what we have to do is that any potential price basically go to the marginal benefit function if it's greater than zero or stay at zero if at that price the curve, the marginal benefit curve has already crossed. So what do we get? We get that the curve that gives the demand is given by this green curve that I'm drawing here for you. That is the demand function at any possible price. And that's great because it's telling you that if you know the marginal benefit curve that we know how to calculate trivially, we can very easily 
identify or characterize the curve that gives you the demand function. Let me emphasize one point that sometimes causes confusion among some students and leads to mistakes in the problem sets. I am not saying with triple exclamation mark that the demand function at any price is just equal to the marginal benefit curve at some x. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that if I ask you to identify the demand function, all you have to do is compute the marginal benefit function and you get that. What I'm saying is more subtle than that. What I'm saying is that this locus of points okay, serve a dual role. When you look around it about them from this perspective, with x being the independent variable, you can think of this curve as the marginal benefit curve. And you can compute that curve quite easily just by taking the derivative of the benefit function. But you can think about it in a, also in an alternative way, which is when you look at it from this perspective, this same locus of points now becomes the demand function, which is the amount, the quantity demanded for any possible quantity. So if you know this locus of points, you know both of them. But you have to be careful what you're being asked because one is a function of x, another one is a function of p. And this should become crystal clear in the next example.